Is there anyone or anything good left in the world, or is it all bad? Well, grab a Bible and turn open to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 13. Hey everybody, this is Pastor Justin Walker, and I'm on a mission to get as many people into God's Word and take as many people through God's Word as are willing to go with me. Uh, God's Word has the answers. If you want to know what's happening in the world today, then we can see what happened in the world then, if you want to know what God's will is, then we can look at what God said and we can find answers right here in his word. And so every day we're going to go through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. And we're not skipping around. We're going all the way from Genesis to Revelation. And I hope that you'll come with me. Today is Genesis chapter 4 and verse 13. We've had the story of the creation of man, the creation of the world, Adam and Eve put in the garden, tempted, fell, ate of the fruit. I'm not trying to like rush through that like I, like I don't care about those things, but simply that uh, we're to the story now of Cain and Abel. Right after we have the fall of man, the very next story is the first murder. We have Cain and Abel. Remember, Cain killed his brother Abel. They had both brought sacrifices uh, to the Lord or offerings to the Lord, and one was accepted. Cain's was not accepted. Abel's was accepted. Abel brought of the flock, and Cain brought of the fruit. And the simple truth there is this, that you can't just bring God whatever you want. You can't just do it your way. The offering was to the Lord, and it should have been the way the Lord had, had made it, had prescribed it. He had obviously, though we don't have the law yet, that'll be given later, God had obviously showed Adam and Eve, and following uh, down the line, he had showed and explained how he wanted offerings to be made, because Cain brought an offering that was not accepted. And the Lord told Cain, he said, if you do well, if you do well, You'll be accepted, and you know that, but if you don't, sin lies at the door. Well, Cain gave in to sin, and he ended up murdering his brother. Took him out in the field, and he murdered his brother. And the Lord gave a, pronounced a curse on him. He said that, you're, that he's going to drive him out. He was going to drive Cain out, and that he'd be a vagabond and a wanderer, and that the earth would not produce, uh, would not yield to him like it used to, because Cain was a farmer. And so this was a, this was a harsh thing for Cain. And so what does Cain say in chapter 4 and verse 13? That's where we pick up. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. First of all, we see that Cain cries out to God and he says, My punishment is greater than I can bear. And if, and if you drive me out, I'm going to be a wanderer. I won't have, I, I'll be driven away from your face. And then whoever finds me, they're going to kill me because, I, because I'm a wanderer. Now, that might raise a question. You might say, wait a minute, who, who else is there? We've seen Adam and Eve, and now we've seen Cain and Abel. Well, friend, it's not hard to understand that by this point, the earth is being populated. And uh, anytime that you have this type of multiplication, this type of compounding multiplication, which is exactly what's happening, you know, two people would make multiple children. Adam and Eve would have multiple children, and those children would have children, and those children would have children. And they were living very long lives then. The, the uh, life expectancy was very long uh, in the on the early earth. And so uh, the earth was populated. These were two grown men. Cain and Abel were grown men, and the earth was populated by this point. Uh, maybe not, well, obviously not to the point that it is today, but enough so that Cain thought, other people could find him, would know who he was, and that they would kill him because of what he was, what he had done in the curse that was pronounced upon him. But here really is the point. Cain is crying and saying, God, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He just killed his brother. He just killed his brother, and now he's crying and saying, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And so the Lord, in his mercy, sets a mark upon Cain, and he says, whoever touches Cain, vengeance is going to be taken on him. To protect Cain so that Cain doesn't have to suffer the way, if you think about it, the way his brother Abel just had to suffer, that his brother Abel just had to suffer and he had to die. And he's and yet he's saying, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And then look at what happens in verse 16. So Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Then, knew, then Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore Enoch. 
And he built a city and called the name of that city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Arad, and uh, to Arad was Mehejael. Goodness, excuse me. And to Mehejael begot Methushael, and Methushael begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore Jabel, and he was the father of those who dwell in the tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of those who play the harp and the flute. And as for Zillah, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Did you catch what just happened there? I'm just going to stop there for just a moment because just what, what just happened was God drives Cain out, tells Cain that he's going to be a wanderer. What does Cain do? Cain goes to the land of Nod and he builds his own city. Names the city after the son that he has with his wife. So he names the city after his, his son. And then there's these other guys that come along. And most specifically, I want to point out, there's this guy named Lamech. And Lamech goes and takes two wives. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is that it's against what God made. Did God make Adam and Eve and Karen? Was it Adam and Eve and Karen? No, it was Adam and Eve. God's prescribed method for marriage is one man and one woman. Well, Lamech goes out and takes two wives. And then we see that as the earth is, is growing, we see that Cain is trying to build a city after God just told him that he was going to be a wanderer. Now he's out trying to build a city. He's rebelling against what God has told him. And so look down the line and we see here's these guys. There's this, there's this Jabel and he's the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. So nomadic people who have livestock and, and hurts people. And then he's got a brother named Jubal and he's the father of all those who play the harp. And then there's this guy, uh, there's, there's Tubal Cain and he's an instructor of all those who work with bronze and iron. Listen, what we see is that the earth is going on, the world is going on. But as the world is going on, what we see is that sin seems to be increasing. Look what happens with Lamech. He says to his wives in verse 23, he says, Lamech's, uh, to Lamech's wives, is Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, the voice of Lamech. Listen to my speech, for I've killed a man. I've wounded him. Now, instead of Lamech, instead of him crying out and saying, I'm concerned because I've killed a man. I'm concerned because of the curse that the Lord might put on me. Remember that our father Cain, remember that our father Cain, he killed his brother. And when he did, the Lord cursed him and sent him out. Instead, what do we see? Lamech stands up and makes a speech, and he says this, If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. If Cain should be avenged, if anybody touches him for killing a man, I should be avenged if anybody touches me for killing a man. And what we see is that sin just seems to be growing. And I would tell you the same thing in today's world. We look around the world, and it is rough. We live in, uh, I think we live in kind of a fog and we live in a bubble, especially here in America, especially here where I am in the middle of the Bible Belt, where there's, uh, you know, Christian people and churches around. But by and large, the world is an evil and wicked place. And when you think about the sex trafficking that's happening or the, uh, the things happening with sexuality and gender and what's happening with our marriages and our homes and what we see with with uh, dads leaving the home and, and uh, leaving their families behind. And now we're seeing the same thing from mothers and what we see with people with, with lying and anger and, and what we see, you watch television, you see what's happening in the politics and the news. You look around and it's, there's bad everywhere you look. It's like it's just progressively getting worse. And yet the world is going on. There's the people playing the flute and the people working with iron and so on. The world is going on, but it seems like evil is increasing in the world. Now I want you to look at the last part of the chapter. It's the it's the 25th verse. Look what happens. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. As for and as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and his name and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Do you see that at the end of the chapter? 
the Lord blesses Adam and Eve, graciously blesses them with another son. And she names him Seth because the Lord had given them another son in place of Abel, who Cain had killed. You can almost see that like Cain and, uh, excuse me, Adam and Eve were mourning. And then finally, Adam knows his wife, Eve, again. They come together again and they have another child. And this child is Seth. And God gives them, he blessed them with Seth. And why is he blessing them with Seth? Because there was supposed to be a promised seed. There is one who would come who would crush the head of the serpent. Cain killed Abel. Abel's gone, not him. Cain's out of it, not Cain. The Lord gives them another son. It's going to be through the line of Seth that the Savior would come. Eve now has a harsh reality to face. It may not be Seth who would... Um, it may not be Seth who would crush the head of the serpent. You know, before she might have thought, it is it Cain? Is it Abel? But now she has a new reality. It's probably not Seth either. It might be through his line, but it's not him. It's not him who the who would crush the head of the serpent, but one who would come through him. And that's true. The one who would come is Jesus Christ. And look, though, look at the last part of verse 26. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Through Seth's line, what do we see is that men are calling upon the name of the Lord. Yes, the world may be bad, but there is an answer outside of this wicked world. And it's the kingdom of God. And you're invited into it through his son, Jesus. If you call on the name of the son, then you shall be saved. That's what the Bible promises. And so, yes, the world is wicked, but you don't have to fall to that. You can be separated from that. We live in this world, but we don't live of this world. The evil and the wickedness that is in us has been forgiven, and we've been made a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus, if we believe in him. That's what God has to offer you. You can call on his name, just like the line of Seth did. You can call on his name, and he will redeem you. He will save you, even when the world is wicked. All right, everybody, I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next week with uh, as we continue through the Bible. We'll be in Genesis chapter 5. I'll see you then.